Oshibajo is expected to address the closing session of the 21st Joint Planning Board and National Council on Development Planning holding in Abakaliki. The meeting was organized by the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning in collaboration with the Bongi State Government with the theme Good Governance and Institutional Capacity, Pathways to Sustainable National Development. Oshibajo on arrival commissioned the 10 kilometers Abaka Likia Fikbo Highway and is also expected to inaugurate other landmark projects executed by the Umahi administration across the state. Now, in the wake of industrial unrest in some electricity distribution firms, federal government is engaging electricity workers to ensure harmony in the power sector. Joshua Ojito reports that the Minister of State for Power, Gordi Jediagba, is leading the intervention. Recent unrest by electricity workers due to non-payment of staff entitlements led to blackout in franchise areas, including the nation's capital, Abuja. Though federal government intervened and resolved the impasse, the conversation here with players in the industry is to sustain industrial harmony so as to serve electricity consumers better. I also hope and pray that the union will work along with governments, as they have always done, to improve the situation of things in the industry. Let us have light by working together and working hard, hard enough to keep this thing going so our economy can improve. Without electricity, this economy cannot move forward. And so it is expected that sitting where you sit in the seat of leadership, that you will chart the path that every other sector will follow to make Nigeria a great nation. The Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment had always advised, guided and mediated. The Honorable Minister of State Power had always kept me close to know where the Minister of Power would intervene, as usual. While federal government assures electricity workers of favorable working condition, it is expected that their commitment to duty will translate to improved power supply. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Now, sustaining and expanding the energy mix policy of the federal government, which targets 30% renewable energy sources by the year 2030. Key players in the electricity industry say he will address the recent challenge of power outages nationwide. Joshua Ojito reports that industry players, in addition to solar home systems, see more interventions in wide wind turbines and nuclear energy will bridge energy gap in the country. While commending the prompt intervention of the federal government to restore supply nationwide, the power engineers advocate for a more coordinated approach in the yearly turnaround maintenance of generating plants so as to avoid a repeat of the recent experience that threw the country into darkness. Uh, planning coordination center for power generation plants and gas suppliers nationwide. This will ensure that a minimum level of power is available on the grid at all times. In accordance with the grid code, the system operator under the supervision of the regulator should be mandated to coordinate Genco's and the TCN expansion and maintenance program to ensure that at all times during the year, there's a minimum of about 6,000 megawatts in the grid, at least for now. That should be the planning and should be what we should be operating on, so that as we upscale upward, we can increase further. But there should be that plan that at all times, this should be what we have already arranged for. The group managing director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, NNPC, Mele Kiari, has informed the House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Upstream on the level of crude oil theft and vandalism and how such acts of crime are impacting the sector. Mele Kari explained that measures have been put in place to improve production output and increase revenue. The GMD suggests setting up of special courts to prosecute the culprits behind these acts of economic sabotage. What we are seeing today, we have not seen it in the last 20 to 25 years in terms of production numbers. Within a distance of less than 20 kilometers, we remove 85 insertions within three weeks. More revelations have come beyond what we imagined. And we don't want to preempt what we are looking for. Let's move away from 
disasters foretold to an era of disasters prevented. Crude oil theft is said to have grossly affected daily production output, which necessitated adjustments to the fiscal framework by the federal government to amend the 2022 Appropriation Act. Now, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, says the federal government is committed to ensuring an efficient transport system in the country for economic and social developments. The minister stated this in Abeokuta as the unveiling of the Ogun State Mass Transit Bus Scheme. Lekon Agbondi reports. Commending Ogun State Government for embarking on huge transport infrastructure investment in the state, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, says with Ogun State Mass Transit Bus Scheme now in place, transportation has been strengthened in the state to provide vital links between centers of production and markets, thereby making life more comfortable for the people. The fact that you are a gateway has given you the benefit of having different and several rail uh, lines that goes to different areas. So your people will be enjoying the construction of railway. And I hope, and it may happen, that most industries, because of the land you have, will move down this way because of the fact that you have railways trans transversing your area within your state. Ogo State Governor Dapo Aberu says efficient transport system remains the only way to promote competitiveness, market accessibility, and economic growth. We are deeply committed to the transformation of this great state. We believe that... As we proceed in this journey, with this mandate that we entrusted to us, you will see how Oku State continues to grow from height to height. Goodwill messages from former President Olusegun Obasanjo and other key stakeholders centered on the effective use and maintenance of the scheme for flow of goods and human movement across the state. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adenia Debayo, has inaugurated the reconstituted National Focal Point Committee for Effective Management, Negotiation and Implementation of Trade Agreements. The 44-member committee is expected to engage with all relevant stakeholders to redefine all ongoing or future trade policy reforms and negotiation strategies with a view to creating more trade opportunities through improved market access for investment. We are here to ensure that trade, investment, and technology policies serve as the core enablers of growth and the sustainable development of the Nigerian economy. Using trade to achieve the broad national development objectives of structural transformation, industrialization, economic transformation, employment generation, and poverty alleviation. Now, efforts of the federal government towards putting an end to open defecation and making every Nigerian have access to water, sanitation and hygiene by 2025 is receiving the recognition of Water Aid, an international non-governmental organization. Lucia Diabo completes the reports. For a government at the highest level to, to understand the worst challenges in the country and declare a state of emergency is the indication of the highest level of political will and commitment to solve the problems. That's the start of the journey. Aside President Muhammadu Bari's declaration of a state of emergency in Nigeria's water, sanitation and hygiene wash sector, addressing challenges facing the sector and carrying along governments at the sub-nationals have been the top priority of government. Water Aid, an international organization that focuses on the wash sector and operating in 34 countries around the world, has been observing activities and programs of Nigeria's water, sanitation and hygiene. With stirring performance of the Ministry of Water Resources, cuts various reforms being carried out, the man in the saddle, Water Aid, has presented an award to the minister, Suleiman Adamu, in recognition of his efforts. When we needed to get the president's award process going, they wanted to know from different countries who was contributing to the work of Water Aid to addressing the worst challenges across the world. So we did a profile on the honorable minister 
and it was clear that he will be one of the biggest winners for that. So we're very happy to be here today to celebrate with him and to give him his award. It's a clear indication that uh, federal government is on the right track. So even the award itself is an advocacy tool uh, for people, uh, all the stakeholders, to appreciate that uh, uh, the issue of sanitation and hygiene or the issue of washing in general is very, very sensitive and very important to the world community at large. For the leadership of the Ministry of Water Resources, the award has come with its own license to re-engineer the country's unwavering commitment to achieving long-lasting results in the wash sector. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiago, NT News. The federal government is strengthening its financial auditing process through capacity building in digital forensics and deployments of technology. The Auditor General of the Federation, Adolfo Sagugu, said this at a lecture on electronic evidence and digital forensics in Abuja. This era of digital accounting, there is, it is imperative that you should go digital in the auditing as well. So we, from the audit house, we see it as a priority for us. Electronic evidence is the way to go, and digital forensics, it is the in thing. It is what a must for any audit that want to survive in the 21st century. Now, the beauty of an airport is beyond the physical structure. Modernization of the airport terminal is extremely necessary for the development of the air transportation system, comfort and, comfort and safety of passengers. Chingeri Okoli examines the present state of the new terminal building of Asaba International Airport. The totality of an airport revolves around features like the type of amenities and conveniences provided, the maintenance culture, the behavior of airport personnel towards passengers, the security apparatus, and the ease of access of amenities, as well as innovative services available. As our airport became operational in 2014 until it was downgraded in 2015 by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority over the failure by the state government to put in place safety and security measures of four state of facilities, but not long after, the governor coalition administration settled for a master concessionaire and sub concessionaire model for the Asaba Airport for the sole purpose of managing the airport to serve the public better and for the betterment of the state. We saw that there was a need to privatize through a concessioning process such that we are not only going to cut off the overhead expenditure that was coming from government but that we're also able to maximize the profitability. On the present state of the new terminal building at the airport, the managing director of Asaba Airport Company, Christophe Panic, revealed that the renovation is ongoing at the new terminal as part of upgrade. The works are still ongoing because we're not finished. And also the other thing that we have improved is the water system. These are the immediate changes that we've made. Now the rest is maybe not as visible as people would uh, want it to be. Passengers flocking the airport say the completion of the new terminal and upgrade will bring more development to the town and its environment. To expand the economy of the state. And not only that, it has attracted development all rounds. It is believed that the recent upgrade will provide new growth opportunities as airlines can operate bigger aircraft for international destinations. In Asabachinere, Okoli, NTA News. Nationwide now moves to Lagos Studio with Kendi as our guide. It's good to see you, Kendi. Hello, Lame. Good to see you too. Secure in the Gulf of Guinea against all forms of external attack and piracy is crucial, owing to the global impotence of the maritime routes to ECOWAS countries. The Chief of Naval Staff, Awa Gambo, while noting strategies designed by personnel to secure the maritime corridors, said Nigerian Navy is in collaboration with the European Union to further secure the maritime space. Abaladi Salami reports. Maritime insecurity has long been one of the most persistent and intractable threats to maritime communities and economic prosperity in West Africa. Importantly, concerted efforts in form of synergy to address the menace was reached in conjunction with the economic community of Central African states to formulate 
the Yaoundé Code of Conduct as a foundation for broad-based regional maritime security along the entire Gulf of Guinea. Efforts to continue to secure the maritime space, especially the Gulf of Guinea, is crucial to the regional navies and international players. In extending the collaboration beyond the continent of Africa, at the time the nation is committed to the sustainable development of our blue economy, the Nigerian Navy is strengthening relationship with the European Union on maritime security. The European Union share a mutual interest with Nigeria. The freedom of navigation along the coast of the Gulf of Guinea is our freedom of navigation as well. While the Nigerian Navy is deploying all in its arsenal to reach the maritime space of piracy, armed robbery at sea, as well as kidnapping of seafarers, synergy with other Gulf of Guinea navies will be sustained to comb the coastal area of illegalities. Working together is a synchronon in the zeal to defend the seas by enhanced maritime security and safety needed to promote international trade. Meanwhile, in the maritime simulation exercise, officers from the Spanish and Italian Navy participated in a research and rescue operation of a vessel that was hijacked by pirates. The willingness of the Nigerian Navy to always collaborate with international partners in efforts to curb maritime crimes in the Gulf of Guinea was re-emphasized in Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTN News. It will no longer be business as usual for recalcitrant traders who are in the habit of undermining extent laws guiding import and export of goods in the country. As the Papa era command of the Nigeria Customs Service is reinvigorated to clamp down on smuggling activities within the port. The era controller Yusuf Malanta sounded a note of warning while briefing media on the command's activities in the first quarter of 2022. Details in this report. Barely four months into the year, the Nigeria Customs Service at Papa Command has in no small measure surpassed the revenue generated between the month of January to March 2021 by 65.7% when compared to 2022. This feast was made possible through officers' dedication and leveraging on information technology. A Papa Command will always ready to assist in facilitating legitimate trade and ensuring that all forms of smuggling activities through false declaration on imports from export trade done in defiance to the extant trade guidelines will be detected through our layers of control mechanism. In its anti-smuggling campaign, goods that fall under the probation list were seized, totaling 46 items with a duty paid value of close to 1.2 billion naira. The non-inspection uh, uh, inspection regime is targeted in increasing volume of cargo inspection saving cost and time of clearing, storing reliable data and image for reference purpose, and reduce human contact in the examination of containerized cargo leading to delay in the clearance time. Not resting on its antecedents, the command says its track record would only propel officers and men of the command to up its antics in discharging their responsibility. And that's a bit from here in Lagos. Felicia and Joss is waiting to bring you stories from that zone after this break. But before then, we'd like to remind you that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nt.ng slash alive and on YouTube at NT News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NT Network News, Twitter handle at NT News Now, and on Instagram at NT Network News for updates. The Nigerian aviation sector is rapidly growing with the construction of new international airport terminals in several regions of the country. The new Murtala Mohamed International Airport has an estimated passenger increase of 30 million annually and 15 million for Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. Malam Aminu Kano International Airport is also expected to open new frontiers for the region with more travel capacity for the annual Hajj, while the new Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, avails more business opportunities connecting the industrial cities in the region to the world. These new terminals beat world-class standards with enabling infrastructure that aid air travel, tourism, and the eventual growth of the country's GDP. Open up commerce and, of course, link us to uh, international uh, societies. People from international community will come here to do business, and then that will bring in more revenue to the states. Now, distances can be seamlessly covered as Nigeria keeps raising its bar to suit global infrastructure standards.
by Nigel Registration and Telemart in partnership with NTA Television Enterprises Limited. The Buy Niger Project presents International Market Access Platform, BuyNiger.com, a one-stop e-commerce portal and public procurement referral for exclusively made in Nigeria products and services. The Telemart for buying and selling on television for company and product registration, participation, sponsorship, and adverts on Telemart. Call Acho on 080-9521-2547 or Sarah on 080-331-73233. Visit www buyniger.com or www.ntatve.com.ng for products inspection standards and quality assurance buy niger center the arena nta headquarters abuja fct buy niger market square mount view mall life camp abuja buy niger providing market access for entrepreneurs in the 36 states and the fct from local to global Candidates who are interested in gaining admission into NTA Television College JOS for the 2021-2022 two-year National Innovation Diploma Program are to apply for admission through the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM. The courses available for application include Film and Television Production, Broadcast Journalism, and Television Engineering Technology. Such candidates must have a minimum of five O-level credits in relevant subjects including English Language and Mathematics. For more information, please contact NTA Television College, JAWS, or the marketing department of any NTA station nationwide. Registrar, announcer. Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, VONS, cordially invite general public to the 16th Annual Ramadan Lecture. Topic, Social Media, Effect on Morality. Guest speakers, Professor Ishak Olariwaju Oloyeti, Registrar, Joint Admission Matriculation Board, and Professor Ismail Shehu, Department of Political Science, ABU Zaria, under the chairmanship of Architect Muhammad Namadi Sambu, GCON, former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special Guest of Honor, Right Honorable Oladimeji Bankoli, former Speaker, House of Representatives. Royal Father of the Day, His Highness Ambassador Ahmad Nu Bamali, Emir Rabzazo, Chief Host. His Excellency, Marlon Nasser Ahmed El Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Hosts, Marlon Yaqub Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA, Dr. Mansur Liman, Director General FRCN, and Osita Okechuku, Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Date, Saturday, 9th April 2022. Venue, Lumana Multipurpose Center, River Close, of Jabi Road East, Kaduna. Time, 9 a.m., inshallah. Announcer, organizing committee. Still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Welcome to JOST. National Orientation Agency says it is reawakening the consciousness of students of tertiary institutions on the dangers of drugs and substance abuse, human trafficking and cyber crimes. Director General of the agency, Dr. Garba Abari, stated this during a reorientation program at the Nigerian Television Authority Television College, JOS. Belkisinu has details. Tabbed Campus Focus, the security and reorientation program is against political thuggery, kidnapping, drug addiction, radicalism, and violent extremism. Emphasis on tertiary institutions is supported by the fact that youths contribute more than 60% of the labor force, which drives the process of governance and socioeconomic development. That they are bringing it to us and letting us know is something that uh, is encouraging to us. I never knew about uh, human trafficking. I never knew it exists here in Plateau State. So now that I'm aware of it, I would like to like create awareness also to my friends outside and colleagues. Director General National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari represented, emphasized the need for students to be sensitized, mobilized, and encouraged to shun all forms of social vices and imbibe the Nigerian core values of integrity, patriotism, social justice, and religious tolerance. So of social crisis in tertiary institutions and we want to create a sustainable synergy between national orientation agencies, development partners and tertiary institutions of value reorientation. 
The event featured presentation of papers on dangers of social vices as the agency promised to sustain sensitization for societal transformation. In Jos, Bilkis Nuhu, NTA News. Medical students, University of Jos, are sensitizing schools on oral hygiene for healthy living. Then Red Dingmun has the report. The outreach, which has as its theme, Give a Child a Better Oral Health Hygiene, was organized by the medical students as part of their social responsibility of giving back to society and strengthening community relations. The outreach, apart from meeting the health needs of the communities, also gives them a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Uh, me, um, sensitize and enlighten the students especially in rural areas, and the benefits on taking care of their oral hygiene and the effects and the diseases it will cause if they don't actually take care of it. The beneficiaries express gratitude to the students for the initiative, promising to keep to the medical advice for healthy living. I am proud that they come here to teach us about how to keep our, our teeth clean and healthy. May the God bless them and give them more understanding. It gives the children the insight of how to brush their teeth. And I think it has helped them to even know the impact. And they can also take it down to their parents. It's a very good initiative. Items that will enhance oral hygiene were distributed to the beneficiaries. In Joss, Zen Redding Moon, NT News. And that report brings us to the end of our presentation in Joss. It's back to Lami in Abuja. Thank you, Felicia. Now, police in Adamawa State have intercepted a truckload of hard drugs worth over 38 million naira. Simon Asha reports that five persons were also arrested in connection with the crime. The vehicle, which is said to be transporting the drugs from Anambra State to Mubi local government area of Adamawa State, was intercepted by the Nigerian police after a tip-up on the development, which subsequently led to the interception of the vehicle and the drugs. Briefing newsman, the police public relations officer, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Suleiman Yaya Ingrodi, commanded the members of the public for sharing useful information to the police and urged them to sustain it in the interest of the fight against crimes and criminality in the society. The, the consignments are worth about 38 million naira so far. The targets uh, reside in Mubi according to the preliminary investigations and our men are working tirelessly to see if the receiver will be apprehended and as soon as he's apprehended then we will know to where are they going to distribute such consignment. So items intercepted are 28 cartons of 30 milligram of pentolic injection, 39 cartons of tramadol tablets, 34 cartons of 100 milligram red tramadol capsules, and one carton of 100 milligram clofenic tablets, among others, the police say, will be handed over to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency for further action. In Yola, Samuel Asha, NTA News. Now, the military is tasking participants of the Army War College Course 6 2022 to develop strategies to tackle the evolving asymmetric security challenges in the country. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, stated this at the college. To hereby inaugurate. It is the beginning of training at the Nigerian Army War College for these mid-senior level officers, mostly from Nigeria and five from allied countries. For about nine months, the officers will be taken through several aspects of modern warfare. The current security environment in the country gives added impetus for the need to train operational level leaders to enhance their effectiveness in meeting the ends of military strategic objectives for Nigeria. The increasing asymmetrical nature of modern warfare poses a knot for the participants to crack. The outcome will form part of a larger strategy the Army seeks to deploy in tackling the security challenges in the country. And the current threats are mostly asymmetric and thus do not have ready-made conventional approaches to tackling them. You must therefore learn to think out of the box 
not forgetting that contemporary security challenges of the 21st century submit only to knowledge-based and specialized efforts. The time has come for us to address recruitment, education, training, and promotion so that they are consistent with the intellectual requirement for the future joint force. The security challenges in the country continues to evolve and the traditional method of tackling them are becoming obsolete. The Army War College Nigeria, established in 2017, is focused at producing trained operational leaders for the Nigerian Army. By El Musa, NTA News. Emergency management agency NEMA in the areas of credible intelligence gathering and human capacity development for effective service delivery in disaster mitigation and management. Kenneth Manim reports that the call was asked the NEMA office in Abuja on a courtesy visit. Protection of critical national assets, front line in disaster management and control, as well as private security services are the core mandate of the NSCDC. Emerging humanitarian crises, occasioned by security threats in parts of the country, have, have, have increased the responsibilities on the shoulders of the core. Women also directed civil defense corps to come up with a robust safe school initiative program that will provide security and safety for our schools. The core believes that for it to succeed, it must work hands in gloves with NEMA, a sister federal agency. Apparently, quick response to credible intelligence shared is key to achieving results. Every single Nigerian is an intelligence officer. How to deal with this conflict is, is basically to work on intelligence and then adopt what is called offensive strategy. Every disaster site is a potential crime site. And this underscores the need for a better relationship between NEMA and NSCDC especially as we make a new resolve to confront the complex adversities and attendant humanitarian outcome nationwide. Both agencies are on the same page on the provision of adequate logistics, security for operational staff and disaster sites or emergency situations, and manpower development as other areas to strengthen ties. Meanwhile, the Secretary General of the Nigerian Red Cross Society also led delegation from the Red Crescent Society of Saudi Arabia to the agency. Their mission is also to deepen collaboration with NEMA in disaster mitigation and humanitarian crisis management. The group is also focusing attention on how best to share experiences in mobilizing support services for victims of humanitarian crises. A herd of cows has been struck by a strange ailment which not less than 10 seriously affected. Quick intervention of officials from the local local government, Kogi State Ministries of Environment and that of Agriculture has helped to avert possible food poisoning as those that were slaughtered and conveyed for sales to unsuspecting members of the public have been mapped up and destroyed. Solomon Aijain reports. An eyewitness account who spoke off camera reveals to NTA News crew that the cows, while returning from grazing at about 6 Wednesday evening, got to Zonate area, Lokoja, and began to exhibit signs of sickness as a result of what many believe is the consumption of agrochemicals. The chairman heard that I had a call from Zone 8 area that uh, cows numbering uh, over 30 were found dead. And uh, they were scared, not even because of the, because they never even thought anybody would come and pick such cow and take to market. The effort will be geared towards carrying out uh, microscopic or whatever test that is required to make sure that uh, poison or uh, contaminated meat is not sold to the public. All two of the infected cows were said to have been intercepted around Zone 8 Junction in the early hours of the day. Some carcass were discovered and retrieved at a code room, with others recovered at Lokongoma Market. We have done enough finding at the code room. We discovered that it is highly dosed with organophosphate, which is detrimental to human beings. And as such, we are condemning it so that it will not be left for them to go and be sold for human consumption. 
the recovered dead cows have since been destroyed and buried in Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. The Babari is standing by in Port Harcourt for the continuation of Nationwide. Let's join her. Hello, the Babari. It's over to you. Welcome to Port Harcourt. Some stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party, led by the former Senate President Bukola Saraki, had visited Governor Yesabwiki to discuss on ways to unite all those aspiring to lead the country in the PDP and chart a roadmap for the party in the 2023 general elections. Ogeniek completes the report. Head of the delegation is the former Senate President Bukola Saraki, briefing journalists after the meeting, which head behind closed said that River State to meet with Governor Wike as a key stakeholder in PDP to discuss how best to unite the party and foster unity among all those who are aspiring to lead the country and forthcoming political dispensation. Saraki says, with the realization that unity is key in making PDP clinch power in 2023 and redirect Nigeria to the path of growth and progress. Key stakeholder of this party to discuss frankly. He's giving us his views, and we're taking some suggestions that we'll continue to work, work with as we move away from here. But the key thing is unity. The key thing is to, to control, uh, put the country first and put the party first. Governor Wike says their interest is the unity of the party and Nigeria to ensure that PDP takes over the realm of leadership in 2023. To the party. Our interest is to make Nigeria happy by making sure by 2023 PDP takes over the reins of uh, government because Nigerians are patiently waiting. And I can assure you that we are going to work as a team to make Nigerians happy. Other members of the delegation include Governor of Bauchi State, Senator Bala Mohammed, Governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Tambua, and Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Navy forwarding operating base, Bonny River State, has arrested a vessel on an illegal deal along the Bonny waterways, laden with over 125,000 liters of automotive gas oil known as diesel. The vessel was handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for further investigation and prosecution. Robin Sinderataide has the details. The vessel MV or 3G was intercepted by officers from the Nigerian Navy forward operating base on the 10th of January 